guys, welcome to the sixth and last part of my video tutorial on how to create a map for Supreme Command of Watch Alliance with AI support. In this tutorial I want to show you how to add player spawn points, no rush areas, mass fields, hydrocarbon fields, also AI markers like island markers, combat zones, defense areas, rally points, secure experimental locations, naval build areas, small expansion areas, land path nodes, air path nodes, water path nodes, amphibious path nodes, naval defense areas, naval rally points, naval links, large expansion areas and transport drop points. So to start with the Supreme Commander Marker Editor you have to download it. For example, you can download the unofficial marker editor. It's made by Hazard X under this link. Also, you have to know where all the editors and games save their maps. So here is a small list with paths, so you know where all the maps are stored. The next step is that we have to copy over our map from the Supreme Commando 1 map folder to the folder where the marker editor tries to access the maps. So here you see that we have the Supreme Commander 1 maps folder. I copied the folder where the map is stored with Ctrl C and paste it in the marker editor maps folder. Now we can open the map in the Supreme Commander Marker Editor. I go to File, Open Map. Now I see here a little preview, line of fire, and press Load. The first step is to place all the player spawn points. So I click here this player start point icon and start placing the player spawn point. Next, I define the no rush areas for each player spawn point. I just click this purple icon and enter the no rush radius here in this field. With this icon, I can also move the area around. In the next step, I will add some mass extractor fields for each player. Here in the view options, I can turn off the different layers. Grid, basic markers like spawn points, combat markers, and so on. For now, I turn off all the markers except the basic markers. In the next step, I want to add some hydrocarbon fields so the players have power. Also, I want to give the player in the front the extra benefits of two extra hydrocarbon fields. So now that we have set the basic markers, I will start adding combat markers. To do this, I add the combat markers in the view options. The first combat marker I will place is the combat zones marker. It defines the areas where probably conflict will happen. The next step we will define where the AI will build defense areas facing the combat zones. In 
the next step, we will build rally points. The AI will send its newly built units to this point. In the next step, we build areas where the AI can build experimental safely. In the next step, we will build naval build areas. So the AI will build naval units here nearby. Okay, in the next step we will build small expansion areas. The AI will build small outposts here in these areas. Okay, in the next step we will build large expansion areas and the AI will build larger outposts in these areas. Okay, in the next step we will place so-called transport drop points. A shortcut is T. In these areas the AI will try to drop enemy units and attack the player from the backside. In the next step we start adding land path nodes. So we activate land path nodes in the view options and we select the land path nodes here with this button. You have to think about it like adding path nodes from the spawn points to every reachable land area. Especially in regions like the ramps it's necessary to put land path nodes so the AI has it easier to navigate. After we set all the land path nodes, we connect them with the right mouse button. In the next step, we add air path nodes. So in the next step we will add some water path nodes. Now we will add some amphibious path nodes. But this is easier since we can let them generate out of the land and the water path nodes. In these areas where the land and the water path nodes need to be connected, we add additional path lines. In the next step we will add naval defense areas.
Also, we need to add some naval rally points. Our last step is to add some naval links. That's the positions where naval units transit between water and land. OK, when all this is done, I check the checkboxes in the view options so I see everything. And go to File, Save Markers. After that, I copy the whole folder from the Supreme Commander Maps Line of Fire directory, Control C. To the Forged Alliance Maps folder. Control V. So there is only one small thing missing, and this is a script file. The script file works as follows. Here you put the name of your map, underscore script dot lua. It's a very small script, but without this script, your game will not start. Or at least it will start, but it will end immediately. The name has to be exactly the same as your map name. Now we start the game and we should be able to see the map in the lobby. Yes, looks okay. The map is accessible in the lobby. Also the commander spawn and the game doesn't end with a game over message. If that happens to your map, then you forgot the Lua script mentioned earlier. We're at the end now of this series of tutorials. I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching.